those welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time here welcome 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 i hope you return and if it's not your first time you already know i'm glad to see you back sis welcome back today i slightly switched the angle on y'all you know switched up a little bit but it's all good because the content is still gonna be fire and i'm super excited to have to go ahead and plug my single mom and single women's coaching program that i'm going to be launching here very soon and i'm super super excited about it you guys like now that i have confirmation that like this is what i'm supposed to do i'm ready to hit the ground running so i can't give you a release date just yet but i'm excited for all that's going to be included in it it's going to have a facebook group where you guys can communicate there's going to be newsletters there's going to be great information trainings so on and so forth so i'm excited i'm ready to pour into single women and single mothers i am a single woman and i am a single mother so i have a heart for us i understand the struggles that we have sometimes because i've lived it and i am living it right now you know and i really just want to help women identify their purpose because you guys know i'm very purpose driven and how to tie that into business and their identity and so on and so forth so stay tuned to daily Dell because we've got some exciting things coming up and you want to stay tuned to my instagram if you're not following that because i will be releasing these announcements on there and then eventually having my own instagram page for the coaching program and like i said a facebook group where you guys can actually meet other single women and other single mothers and really create community because if you're anything like me I relocated to Atlanta and I don't have community down here like that and so I've seen the power of online community and I really want to help foster that with like-minded women so stay tuned all right it's about to get lit over here it's already been lit but it's about to get lit lit <laughs> all right so with that being said to give you a little background if it's your first time here I am a single mother but I am a single mother in an absentee situation meaning my son has never met his father he doesn't know his father his father is nowhere in the picture i raised my son 100 percent on my own now i do have help from my mom and sister who i currently live with and they help me a ton okay my sister is usually the one to watch my son when i'm out working you know when the world was open and i could freelance outside she would watch him put him to bed and all that but since i'm working in the house now she's usually the one to just watch him when i need her to you know and she will like help him help me put him to bed you know help me feed him just really filling those gaps so that i can really grind and get the stuff done that i need to get done so i'm not doing it 100 percent solo dolo but as far as actual parents taking care of the child then yes i am doing it by myself so i'm gonna give you guys a couple of pointers of how i manage being a single mother still doing ministry type stuff and of course starting a business and being an entrepreneur i'm looking down at my notes you already know the drill so let's go ahead and dive right in the first point that i want to make is i get clear on my why understanding your purpose helps you have so much clarity because when you don't understand your purpose and why you're supposed to be doing what you what god wanted you to do it's honestly just foggy like you just don't it's almost like like people say throwing spaghetti at the wall you know and trying to see what sticks you're just kind of doing a little bit of this doing a little bit of that no clear direction no strategy you're all over the place you know so you have to really get clear on your purpose and i have videos on my channel about purpose go ahead and check those out i will link them down below as well but i really dive in in those videos of how to get clear on that and how to even pinpoint that but we got to start there because if you don't understand that like i said you're gonna kind of be just rambling around and not really any clear direction and it really makes a difference once you understand your purpose and you can get clear on your why and their why is really just like okay well if this is my purpose why am i doing this like who is it impacting what do i really want to gain from this you know for my own family and bloodline etc etc point number two is prioritize Sometimes the squeaky wheel gets the grease, all right? Everything's not gonna get done. You make a plan and you strategize so you know the direction that you're trying to go into. But to get everything done in one day, especially as a mother, is a miracle. Like, like it's so much that goes on, especially when you have little ones. You know, my son, I can't tell you what he's gonna be like tomorrow. When they hit a certain age, their personality is pretty solid and you pretty much can predict like, you know, for the most part, how the day is gonna go. You can't predict it, predict it, but you can, pretty much you know tell when they're very small like you know 
infants, of course, toddler stage. My son is three, he's a toddler. You know, you just don't quite know. So I can have a plan and then my son wakes up in a mood and it's just like everything goes, you know, <laughs> to the fan. So it's one of those things where I really just prioritize what's the most urgent, what needs to be done right now that cannot wait. And that's why I said the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Figure out what is urgent, figure out what cannot wait, and just do that first. It's okay if the other things go to the back burner because they're not urgent. You know, don't let the urgent stuff slip through the cracks and don't try to be superwoman and wear yourself thin trying to do it all in one day. You know, there is tomorrow. Like, don't procrastinate, but Lord willing, you got tomorrow as well. You know, so just strategize, but also give yourself grace and prioritize the squeaky wheel, the most urgent. Point number three, have a schedule. So for me, before Corona hit, I was already freelancing, you know, doing DoorDash, picking up projects as I can, creating my own schedule. I wasn't working a nine to five where I had to report in. So having a schedule was important for me, even though yes, technically I can work whenever I want, it still brings structure to your day. Even before I had my son, I was freelancing, you know? And so it brings that structure because coming out of corporate America where I did have to report in at a certain time or within a certain time frame, you know, I was accountable for those hours and being there at a certain time and for a certain amount of time throughout the week to go into freelancing. It's freedom, but at the same time, you can find yourself like either not showing up enough to get the job done or overworking because the thing is with freelancing and working working at home, you don't have a solid clock out. You know, you can end up working way into the night. You can end up just overdoing it or underdoing it and underperforming. So having that schedule helps you stay on par to where you're not wearing yourself thin, but you're also not showing up enough for your goals to be accomplished and so on and so forth. Not only that, but it makes it clear on when my clock out time is. So when this time hits, I'm not working anymore. I'm gonna spend time with my son. I'm gonna unwind. You know, you wanna have a little fun too. You wanna watch a Netflix series. You know, you wanna listen to a podcast you like. You don't always just wanna work, 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 work. Like, <laughs> you also wanna be able to unwind. Otherwise, you will feel it. It will wear you down and it will show, you know, cause you're not gonna be able to show up as your best self when you're worn out. So make sure you have a schedule. That is a must. I will also add, have deadlines for certain things because when I have deadlines, then it helps me to execute my strategy even better and more efficiently. Because I can say, okay, I'm gonna have this schedule and I'm gonna work between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m., you know? But then I can end up just kinda like, just going through the motion still. But when I say, all right, I've got to create this video, so I'm gonna give myself until this day and this time to do it. I need to make so much, mo so much money by this time, this day, you know, it gives a clear end goal and I'm able to work towards that. You know, if I know I need to make a hundred dollars extra, if, let's say like for instance, when I was driving Lyft and Uber, I would always strive to make at least $800 a week in the DC area. And so I would put that in the app and they would give me reminders and on my phone in the calendar and both would give me reminders like, hey, you know, it's this day, you said you wanted to make this amount of money per day. And so it kept me on task. So if I fell short, and it's like, dang, like I said, I want to make, you know, $200 per day working four days a week. And yesterday I only made 125. That means tomorrow I need to go even harder. I need to work a little longer. I need to change up my strategy a little bit to make sure I meet the goal or even surpass it. So the deadlines help you to really hit the target in a timely manner and not just be out here grinding, grinding, grinding. Or like I said, not showing up enough. Point number four is set boundaries. So again, this goes into the schedule in a way, but more so when I wrote this down, I was coming from a place of understand when it is time, like let your kids understand when it's time for you to work so that they can respect your space. With me being a single mother, my son Christian wants to be around me all the time. Like the minute he sees me, it's a wrap. So a lot of times I don't even open my bedroom door because this is my office space in my bedroom. I don't even open my bedroom door until I'm like solid. Like I got everything I need to get done, done. Because once I open the door and he sees me, he's gonna wanna come in my room. He's gonna wanna sprawl out on my bed. He's gonna wanna play with my laptop, you know, play with my camera. He likes to take pictures and stuff. He's, he's so artsy. He's so into being a content creator and just a creative in general, you know? And so I talk to him and I let him know like, hey, I've got to work and I've got to do this stuff so that 
um, we can have a better life. So when my door is closed, like you have to respect that. You can't come knocking on my door, making a bunch of noise because I might be recording something and then that picks up on the recording. And if I'm halfway through a video, now I have to start all over and that's a waste of time, you know? So I have these conversations with him, even though he's only three and it's helped him to understand like, okay, mommy's working. I can say, hey, you gotta quiet down. I'm taping something. I'm doing a live stream. He's like, oh, okay, all right, bye, you know? So have those boundaries for your kids to know like this is my working time, this is when mommy's working on her business or her brand or whatever, but then also have those boundaries from work to where you're like, I'm not gonna overdo it. Like if it is a business you're trying to build and let's say you have like a co-business co owner that's building it with you, let them understand that like after a certain time, I'm not gonna talk about business. Like this is my time for my family, this is my time to unwind. So if you have a business related question, send me an email, I'll get to it tomorrow type of thing. People around you, whether it's business partners, kids, significant others, whoever, need to understand boundaries. Otherwise, you will have to be trying to be everything to everybody and that's just not feasible. Like you can't upkeep that. Someone's gonna have to get a no. Someone's gonna have to get a not right now and that's okay. But once you have those boundaries in place, it's gonna help make your life easier, particularly when you are starting a business. Because I mean, a lot of us are trying to be solopreneurs, or like I said, you might have a partnership with one other person, but it takes a lot of work to build a business. And so you need that time where you can focus in, but you also need that time where you can unwind and get your mind right and people respect when you are in both of those spaces and kids are no different. As young as they are, they can understand so point number five I include my son in as much as possible. So the beauty of freelancing is that my son can't come with me, especially when I was like freelancing outside the house, like I said, and I was doing food delivery for a while, DoorDash, Postmates and stuff. You can have someone in the car with you. So a lot of times I would bring my son with me, especially if it was like during the daytime and he would get to get out and see the world and stuff. I stopped bringing him after some time because he wanted to eat everybody's food. And so then he would get mad when he can't eat the food and it would just be a whole debacle. But if my sister was with with me I will bring him with me so he can get out and so he knows mommy's working to make money for us but then he's also enjoying the time together and that's near and dear to my heart because my dad did that with me and my siblings growing up you know my sister and I we were always at my dad's office my dad was a self-taught accountant and he was always blessed to have jobs where he can pretty much create his own hours and he always had an office where he had some privacy or at least like a spacious cubicle at the very least and so they didn't mind him bringing us in and on the weekends he would go to like get ahead of work and just work on some things he might have been a little behind on and he would make it a family day you know we might go to the museum or go see a movie beforehand and then in the evening like around six o'clock seven o'clock or so we'd go to the office with him and he'd be working and we're sitting in his office or another part of the office a break room or something watching tv playing a game you know by the time laptops came around me and my sister bring our laptops we're playing on our laptops socializing with people our friends and stuff and it became a family time where my dad can work and we understand okay dad is working but we're here to spend time with him and we can enjoy each other's company without necessarily overstepping that boundary of allowing him to work and so it really helped me growing up to even though my dad worked two jobs and at one point he was working like 20 hour days I never felt like I didn't have my dad around enough I, I never felt like I needed more time with him because he always included us in his work and, and wherever he could and I do the same with Christian if I can include him in a video I include him if I can include him in a live stream, I include him. If I'm editing a video and I'm like to a point where he can't really do much damage, I will let him come and sit with me. You know, I'll let him take pictures with me a lot of times because I do do mommy content as well. So sometimes I legitimately need him to be in the picture. And other times, even if it was a day where I was planning to take pictures by myself, I will still let him come in the picture and just join me and have fun or be in the atmosphere, you know, look at my sister, take the picture or look at the timer on the phone and just find little ways to get him going. And now to the point where he understands because we had a photo shoot today and the photographer was like he's the easiest kid I've ever worked with he under he understands now content creation he understands, okay, I gotta stand over here to take this picture, I gotta pose like this, and when the photographer gives me an instruction, I gotta do it. It was seamless, it was seamless to have him in the photo session today. I mean, he honestly was had a little Devo moment at the end because he didn't want the photo session to end, but I'm like, son, like, she got stuff to do. Like, we can't be here all day taking pictures in this heat, this Georgia heat, the sun was blazing today. But that's neither here nor there. So I make sure I include him as much as I can because it gives him 
him expose this stuff and lets us spend time together. And it also just helps him out. I mean, it helps me out, it helps him out. It's just a win-win. So point number six, multitasking and batch creating, okay? When I multitask and batch create, it saves a ton of time later on, and I'm able to get ahead of the ball game and stay ahead of the ball game. I try to stay ahead of the ball game so that way I don't have to ever really try to play catch up, or at the very least, I'm on par. So for instance, like I said, we had a photo shoot today. This is the outfit I wore for the photo shoot, makeup, hair, all of that. But what I did once the photo shoot was done, I came in the house, changed my outfit, and I took more pictures outside, and then I changed my outfit one more time and I took more pictures in the house with my son both outside inside and inside the house and then I went live on my Instagram page and I covered some topics that I needed to cover I took some selfies on my phone just to have as backup pictures and I went ahead and started taking my YouTube videos so that's why you guys see me here in this outfit you know so once I'm dressed and my makeup is done trust you're gonna see your girl in several different forms of content whether that's picture video live streams whatever it doesn't matter i'm getting it done once my makeup is done and my hair is done and that saves me a ton of time so that way i can get to play with my son more i can get to get to the things that um you know are just hobbies for me more because i love what i do for a business and i love the business i'm building up here with the coaching and stuff and my youtube but i do have hobbies as well that i'm not looking to gain anything from that bring me a a different kind of joy so that's why I multitask and I batch create because then instead of me always having to you know beat my face every day and do my hair and do the most I can just say all right I took enough pictures this should last me for at least two to three weeks and the way I space out my content and repurpose it it can really last me for two two months or so sometimes three months so I can now take that time and enjoy my downtime or my time with my son or whatever the case may be so that's very important if you are going to be a, a mom entrepreneur Newer, make sure you have a, a ability to multitask in some way shape or form but also batch create even if you're not the best multitasker try to batch create if you can multitask a little better then it's really just about trying to kill two birds with one stone so for instance if you have a podcast and you also do YouTube videos tape your your video your YouTube video while you're recording your podcast get the mic out speak in the mic but then also record the YouTube video so that way you can have the podcast for your podcast audience, but then you can have your YouTube video already done at the same time for your YouTube audience, and you just knocked out two birds with one stone. So try to find ways like that where you can multitask and it's not going to stress you out as much. For me, I've always been able to balance multiple things at once because I run my Daily Dell page, I manage my mom's page, Mama Martin's Kitchen, you know, I'm building a coaching program, and I have like an email list, and there's so much going on, but for me, I thrive under pressure you know <laughs> i operate and work so much more efficiently like that so it works for me everybody doesn't like that it, it can cause anxiety it can stress people out so whatever works for you find ways to multitask and batch create at the same time and i promise you it will make a difference when you are trying to build a business as a mom and especially if you're a mom and a wife and all this extra stuff it's really going to make a difference for you Point number seven is I try to avoid mom guilt. So one thing that really kind of makes me feel guilty as a mother is the fact that obviously, like I said, I'm a single mother. So I often feel guilty because of that, because I'm like, even though it's not my fault, like his father did not want to be in the picture. He says so verbatim, <laughs> word for word, basically. It's not my fault because of that part, but I just feel like, okay, well, if he had his father around, I wouldn't necessarily have as much pressure on me and maybe I won't be, I wouldn't be dealing with certain things I deal with right now um, when it comes to just raising a toddler who's strong-willed and you know behavioral issues and things like that nothing super super serious but enough to where it's like it would have been nice to have that other parent here also with that being said because I am a single mother I have to hold down the fort on both ends. I have to go out there and get after it and grind to make it happen for us so we can have a better life. But then I also have to spend time with him. And a lot of times I don't have the time to spend as much time with him. You know, I see moms on Instagram making these fun games for their kids and these fun activities and doing all these really great hands-on stuff. And I just have never been that mom. I'm not the type to like, you know, sit and create a whole game for my son and stuff. Like I'd faster just let his imagination 
imagination run wild, play tag, do what I can. But even that, I don't get to do as much as other moms. And so it's easy for me to feel guilty and be like, dang, like I'm not a good mom because I'm working too much or this or that, the third. And so I try to avoid mom guilt. And like I said earlier, I try to explain to my son that I'm working so hard so that we can have a better life, that eventually we can get on our own two feet. We can have our own. I, I'm very, very happy for the village I have with my mom and my sister, but I do want to get back to having my own one day as well, you know? So I, I speak to him and he understands. It's it's letting him internalize it, even though he can't respond back and be like, oh yeah, mom, I understand, you know, the economy, <laughs> this and that. He can, and he's internalizing it to know like, mommy's working hard for us. It's not just, she doesn't want to be around me. It's but she's working hard so we can have, and so I can have a better life than she had. You know, I don't want my son to go through a lot of the things that I went through. And my parents did their best, you know, but there were a lot of hardships I went through and a lot of hardships that I'm still coming out of. And I want to have my son be able to avoid those as best as possible. So I work so hard now so that five years from now, I don't have to go as hard in the paint. And he'll still be young enough where we can really just still enjoy life and I can enjoy him in his young age, you know? So it's a balance. And I would say if you are a mom looking to start a business, really have tunnel vision where that's concerned because it's easy to get into the comparison trap and see how other moms mother and some moms are really hands-on they're all in with their kids and particularly as single mothers we just don't have that luxury a lot of the time unless you're blessed to work at home or already have a thriving business a lot of the time you're gonna take some L's when it comes to spending quality time with your kids, especially depending on where you live, maybe different things you're trying to do to elevate yourself. You might be going back to school, you might be taking training courses, you might be trying to build a business and still work in a very robust and demanding nine to five. It's so many different things to consider. So don't beat yourself up and don't make yourself um, believe that you're not a good mom because you are working so hard. You're working hard for your children or your child and you know, you're doing the best you can with the hand you've been dealt. My last point is keeping God at the center of everything that I do. I can grind as hard as I want. I can strategize as hard as I want. I can have a plan as hard and or as bad as I want. But if God is not at the center of it, all I'm going to do is be ripping and running and literally wear myself thin. I don't want to rely on my own strength and my own knowledge or my own wherewithal. Everything that I do, I want it to be in the purpose and the will of God for my life. I don't want to start a business if God's not telling me to start a business. You know, like that's how I even came to do this culture program because God kind of like put it on my heart and stuff. And I'll get to that in the next video on here. But I always try to keep God at the center. So even when I feel myself getting too consumed with the business and making it an idol, I revert back and it's like I get back centered and focused and remember that a business is a means to more resources, but it's not my God. My God is, is the God above, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ, the Lord of my life. Like that's who I worship. I don't worship money. I don't worship a business. I don't worship any of that. And so I think it's really important to just keep that focus and to understand that like God is going to open the doors for you that you need to walk through. He's going to make a way for you based on your gifts and his will for your life. And I'm a living testimony to that. If you guys know my story, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, go back and watch my video about how I moved to Atlanta and just, you know, like my pros and cons of Atlanta video. I have a couple of videos on here where I've, I've said like just different ways that God has been opening doors. So remain faithful to God, submitting to his will for your life. And really keeping that focus and relying on his strength instead of yours is going to make a difference. So that's those are my points. That's what I wanted to say. I hope that this is encouraging and helpful for some moms out there, particularly, like I said, my single mothers. Know that you are fully capable of accomplishing your goals and your dreams. And if God put it on your heart to start a business, there's a reason why. So keep steadfast, keep focused, stay encouraged, and know that I'm rooting for you. I will see you guys on the next video. Love you. Bye.